the wall is Wednesday, December 14th in the NBA. My three favorite picks are on the way. Let's recap yesterday. Our second straight winning day, our second straight two in one day as James Harden gets his over in PRAs. LeBron James gets his over in points pretty easily. And Zion Williamson enters the fourth quarter with 26 points. It's a blowout. He does not get it done. And last night, there was tons of blowouts. In fact, the five games, four of them were decided by over 15 points. The only close game was that Celtics-Lakers game that went into overtime. But either way, we'll take a two in one day. It should have been a 3-0 sweep. The sweep continues to elude us. Maybe we'll get after it today. Our Thursday night football video will be live later on tonight. Definitely stay tuned for that. I do not have a best bet of the day. I don't really feel like putting one and a half units on any of these three plays because I like all of them equally. Let's start with this first one. We're putting one unit on it. Donovan Mitchell, over 25 and a half points, minus 113 on FanDuel. And if you ever need any sportsbook sign-up bonuses, go down below and hit. you can check out all of them. But let's talk about Mr. Mitchell as he's returned last game after a couple game absence due to injury. Returned with 28 points on 24 field goal attempts. Look, there's something I can guarantee about Mitchell. He's going to go out there and shoot a bunch. And you look, the Cavaliers have a tough matchup on the road in Dallas. And I don't expect this game to be high scoring. Neither do the books. The over-under is, what, 214 and a half? But... Mitchell can still go out there and score a lot of points because the Cavaliers are going to need him to do that because Darius Garland, his running mate, has been very bad on the road. His line is all the way down to 19 and a half, but honestly, I think that's about where it should be because he just has not been himself on the road. So Mitchell's going to have to step up, and he's obviously has played the Dallas Mavericks a lot in his career. Being in the Western Conference with the Utah Jazz, his last four against them, he scored 33, 33, 17, and 12 points. So obviously, you know, the 17 and 12 aren't ideal, but 33 is nice, and he's been all over the spectrum. But I think the field goal tents will be there tonight. We just need him to knock down some shots. And you look at Mitchell averaging 29 points per game on 20.6 field goal attempts per game. He's over this line in 17 of 24 games. So a great track record hitting this over, and I certainly think he can get it done. Now, you look at the games he's gone under. He's gone under only seven times this year. Three of them were due to blowouts with 25, 26, only 27 minutes played. Now, obviously, Mitchell only goes out there and plays, you know, 25 to 27 minutes. He's not going to hit this over, but I do anticipate this game being close. The spread is still close, and while it's a lower over-under than the normal on the slate, I still do think Mitchell can go out there and get it done. Now, he's over this line, 25 and a half points in 10 of 13 road games, so he's been pretty aggressive on the road, and I expect him to be aggressive attacking the rim, hopefully getting to the free throw line. We saw Shea Gildas Alexander just drop 42 on the Dallas Mavericks. Now, I'm not saying Donovan Mitchell scores 42 in this game, but should be able to go out there, be aggressive, attack the rim. They saw what, what Shea Gildas Alexander had success against this Mavericks defense. I anticipate Spida being out there, shooting a ton, 26 points, for a guy averaging 29, I think he can get that done. We'll take his over 25 and a half points. Now, my second play of the day will be Mr. Bam out of bio on my shirt. It's not Jimmy Butler, it's not Tyler Hero. It's Bam out of bio. We're taking his over 32 and a half points plus rebounds, minus 120 on DraftKings. Perfectly playable at 33 and a half. If you're like, Austin, what do I play? His points or his rebounds? Personally, I lean his rebounds at 10 and a half. I think that might be the safer leg because I, I do think there's a reason or a reasonable chance we see Bam get, you know, 16, 17 rebounds tonight. That would not be absolutely crazy. Now, I do also think Bam out of bio could score 25 points. Hence why I'm on points plus rebounds. I really don't want PRAs because Bam does not notoriously get a lot of assists. You can take it if that's the only option you're getting, but I'd much prefer either taking a points or a rebounds line than taking his PRAs. That's just my personal opinion. But let's talk about him as the Thunder. They're, that's who they're taking on. Allow the eighth most points per game and the first most rebounds per game to center. Hence why I lean his rebounds a little bit more than his points. But I do think he gets over 20 points. I just think his 22 and a half point line is pretty sharp, but I do think he can get over rebounds as well. Now, Bam out of bio, if you look at centers that have taken on OKC, this has just been the recent game log versus them. You look at Jared Allen at 32 points plus rebounds. Evan Mobley at 33 points plus rebounds. So only one of them went over, but the play on the same damn team. I mean, come on. While they play on the same dang team, I think if there was just one of them out there that would easily crush this line. Clint Capella, 30 PRs. You thought Alperum Sangoon? 40. Nikola Vucic, Vucevic, 26 PRs. Nikola Jokic at 39 points and 10 rebounds. So the list goes on and on. Those are just guys that have played 30 or more minutes versus this team. And the centers have a field day versus OKC. They don't have a lot of size underneath. And the Heat are going to be without Jimmy Butler. So Bam out of bio. Should see another big workload on offense. We've seen him do that in the last six games without Butler out there. He's averaged 24.3 points per game, 11 rebounds per game as well. He set the over in only three of those six games, but all the games have been getting close to it. And I think this matchup kind of will boost him over that lumber. And the biggest thing is Bam Adebayo has averaged 18.3 field goal attempts in all six of those games. So he's shooting it a bunch. And if you look at those centers that I just talked about a couple seconds ago, None of those centers had 18 field goal attempts. In fact, the most was Jokic, I believe, was or Alperun Sengun at 17. A lot of those guys had like 
9, 10, 14 field goal attempts. So, Bam Adebayo is shooting more than that, and I think he should have a better day. Now, Bam Adebayo, has, in general, has already hit this over in three of the last four games, been playing pretty well, and versus OKC, he's played pretty well in his past as well. Look at his last three games versus the Thunder. 28, 32, and 28 points plus rebounds. Now, sure, he's under in all three of those games, but the fact that is, he played 25 and 28 minutes in two of those games, and he never attempted more than 10 field goal attempts at any of those games. So he's gonna attempt more than that tonight, and if he doesn't, he pulls a DeAndre eight and no show, then whatever. Bam Adebayo has those games where he doesn't show up, but he also has games where he could go out there and score 30 points. This would be an ideal matchup for him to do that, especially as Tyler Hero likely gets Lou Dort on him. I think Bam Adebayo has the most advantageous matchup. He just has to go out there and take advantage of it. I know sometimes he doesn't, but I think he does tonight against the Thunder. It's a high scoring game. The spread is only like, I don't know, not less than five points. I think this is a close one. I think Bam Adebayo has a big night. We'll take us over 32 and a half points plus rebounds. Now, my third and final play is arguably the wackiest play we've had this season because it is a same game parlay. And I'll talk about it and talk about different pivots, but here's what I'm riding with. Tara Rozier and Kelly Oubre, both of these two guys to score 20 plus points. All it is is plus 110 on DraftKings. All we need is 20 plus points from each of these two fellas. If we're going to cash plus 110. Now, on FanDuel, this is minus 101. You can take that there. And if you're like Austin, I don't have a same game parlay, which I anticipate a lot of comments about. I also don't mind either of these guys' overs and points. If I had to pick one guy, I lean Tara Rozier, but I think both of them can certainly get it done. And this plus play has been pretty good. And hopefully we're not too late to the party. Now, let's talk about this because LaMelo Ball, Gordon Hayward, Cody Martin, Dennis Smith Jr., all these guys are still out, and that's what's led to the Ubre and Rozier show. These guys have had to go off and taking on the Pistons, over-unders at 225 or so. Both these guys are going to have to continue to shoot the ball a lot and hopefully score. And you look at over the last eight games, both these guys have been on a very good tear. Hopefully they continue that today. Now, Ubre over these last eight games, averaged 24.9 points per game, scored 20-plus points in all eight games. Rogier, on the other hand, averaged 24.9 points per game, scored 20 plus points in all eight games. So they've both been very consistent. They have gotten very close to their line. Some of them like to go under right on the one on the hook. This avoids the hook. Hopefully neither of these guys ends with 19 points, but this avoids the normal hook on their normal player props. And look, this exact same bet has cashed eight games in a row. Can it make it nine? Knock on wood. We sure hope so, but look, these guys are shooting a ton. 21 field goal attempts per game over that eight game stretch for Rozier. 20 field goal attempts for Mr. Oubre. PJ Washington's really not playing too well. So it's basically these two guys out there with a ton of volume, shooting a bunch. And this is a fast paced game against the Detroit Pistons. So the field goal attempts will be there. Not a lot of defense. The Pistons are second worst in defensive rating in the league and i just think this is a great play i mean the over under 225 and a half the spread's only two and a half so should be a close game and both these two guys have just been way too consistent for me to kind of shy away from them so if this cash is today we might run it back in the next game but plus 110 on this the, both these two guys to score 20 plus points i'm gonna take a stab at it i think it's got a good chance both guys have been very consistent and we don't play a lot of same game parlays as kind of an official play because i know some people out there can't play it but it's too good to pass up I'll take a stab at it. Plus 110, I think is way too good odds. I think this should be more like minus 115, minus 120. So give it to me. Give me both the two guys, Kelly Oubre Jr., Terry Rozier, each to score 20 plus points, and we'll cash out. Plus 110, sign me up. Now, those are my three plays of the day. Will we add a fourth play? Maybe. We'll see. Check the pin comment. Maybe there's a fourth play out there in the horizon. I did like Anthony Simons over in points. Just don't know if I want to lose money on Simons. We've seen Simons uh, wrong us in the past. So we'll see if we want to add a fourth play. But we've been so good with three. Why well, kind of add a fourth and maybe risk a little mo mo changing up the mojo. But either way, those are my three plays of the day. Time to shout out some COS All-Stars. If we've helped you make some money, go down below. Hit that hit that subscribe button. Hit that join button too and become an All-Star. I'll shout you out tomorrow. Here are our new ones. We got Frank. We got Powell, Custom Concrete. We got Jack. We got EPG. We got John Favors. We got IMDJ. And we got Stuart. Thank you guys all so much for supporting the channel. We can't do it without you guys. As I said at the top of the show, Thursday night football video will be live later on tonight. Hopefully we can turn it around in the NFL because we've been really struggling over the past couple weeks. But my name's Austin. I'll be back again tomorrow morning, hopefully with a 3-0 day, but I won't complain if it's a 2-1 day. I'll see you guys back again then. This is Austin. I'm signing out. Peace.